And then if we use the intermediate mass as a landmark again for the thalamus, then there's a depression around it, which is the third ventricle. So essentially the two lateral ventricles are the first two ventricles. And then this is the third ventricle, this depression around the intermediate mass. And so this is the choroid plexus of the third ventricle we're seeing here. Now, the way fluid would move is there's a little hole that runs from the lateral ventricles into the third ventricle, and we can kind of see it at the end of the fornix here, which would be the interventricular foramen, and we would have one on each side from each lateral ventricle. So the fluid that's produced in the lateral ventricles eventually moves into the third ventricle, and then fluid that's produced in the lateral ventricles and third ventricles eventually move through a little groove that's in the top of the brain stem. And so the groove is actually separating the front aspect of the brain stem from the corpora quadrigemini that we talked about and the cerebellum back here. So this groove is called the cerebral aqueduct. And so the name aqueduct tells us that fluid is moving through here, so cerebral spinal fluid. And fluid from the third ventricle moves through the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle. From the fourth ventricle, the fluid is going to uh, exit the external aspect of the brain and then uh, enter the subarachnoid space. So inferior to the cerebellum, there is a hole in the fourth ventricle that we call the median arpature. And so fluid would exit this area and go out into the subarachnoid space here. And then in the lateral wall of the uh, fourth ventricle, we would have a lateral arpature that allows fluid to move as well. Later in lecture, we'll talk about the arachnoid villi and the superior sagittal sinus, because those are blood, the, this is a blood vessel that the fluid's going to be reabsorbed in, and the arachnoid villi are the extensions of the arachnoid mater into that uh, uh, blood vessel. In the lab, you really can't see the arachnoid villi, but this large blue blood vessel that sits in the longitudinal fissure of the brain is the superior sagittal sinus. And then if you'll recall, on the inside of the skull, we had a groove we learned called the superior sagittal sulcus. So now we're putting one and two together. What created the groove was this blood vessel that we refer to as the sinus. So the last thing we're going to look at today are nerves that arise from the brain. So they come off the brain and form what we call the peripheral nervous system. And we have 12 nerves that arise off the brain, so we call them cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are largely responsible for innervating the face, neck, and upper shoulder area. And during embryonic development, these nerves arise uh, in a way in which they're very linearly organized. And then as the brain maturates, it curves, and so it creates kind of a curved pattern to it. So they're numbered 1 through 12, and then each one has a name. Uh, oftentimes, you can learn them by number first and learn the, or the organization of them on the brain more quickly, and then go back and put a name to it. So that's the strategy we're going to use. We're going to just go through their numbering system, and then we'll go back again and... Uh, look at uh, their, their correct name. So this would be nerve one, which would be associated with the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tract. As we move posterior, this is where nerve two has been cut. And then as we continue back posterior, if we look at the Whoa. inside of the brain, uh, they just didn't extend it on the model. Here would be nerve three. Uh, and now if we put the brain back together and continue to look at the process, this little white wire right here represents nerve four. Nerve five is on the side of the pons. As we go midline again, then nerve six is midline at the pons medulla interface. And then on that interface, if we continue laterally, we would find nerve seven and we would find nerve eight. Now, from nerve 8, what we're going to do is we're going to continue down the side of the pons. 
So there are actually three nerves that are kind of together here. And you have to be careful and notice that there are little grooves that they tried to put here and here that separate them. So from nerve eight, we would go to nerve nine, nerve 10, and nerve 11, which is running down the side of the spinal cord. And then from nerve 11, we go anterior, and we would find nerve 12. So if we do that real quick again, it would be nerve one, two, three is down in here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So now let's go back and uh, incorporate the, the true names of these nerves into this pattern. And so if we start at nerve one, it carries sensory information from the nose. So nerve one is the olfactory nerve. As we move backward, nerve two is coming from the retina of the eye, so it's the optic nerve. As we move back from nerve two, the optic nerve, we find that nerve that we see internally right here, and it's the ocular motor nerve, by name, ocular eye motor to move. So it's the nerve that controls the movement of your eye. As we move on, we uh, find nerve four again, which is again represented by this wire, which is the trochlear nerve. And when we do the eye, we'll find out it gets its name because it passes through a little cartilage ring called the trochlea. And this nerve is responsible for innervating the superior oblique muscle of the eye. As we move from nerve four to nerve five, it's the trigeminal, which is the biggest of our nerves going to our, our facial area. It has three branches, hence the name tri in its na name, geminal. So it has a nerve branch that would go to the outside of your eye, so ophthalmic. It has a nerve branch that goes to the upper jaw, maxillary. And it has a nerve branch that goes to the lower jaw, mandibular. So hence the name trigeminal. Now as we move midline again, nerve six is the abducens. And the abducens is another nerve that is involved in the eye. And the abducens innervates the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. So when we're looking at the nerves we've covered so far, nerve two, nerve three, nerve four, and nerve six all deal with the eye and movement of the eye and visual input of the eye in the optic nerve. Now as we go from nerve six, which is the abducens, and we go lateral, nerve seven here is the facial nerve and it involves um, most of the muscles of facial expression that we learned. Nerve eight is the vestibular cochlear nerve. The first part of the word vestibular is a reference to equilibrium and balance in your inner ear. And then cochlear is the apparatus in your ear that allows you to hear. So the nerve eight is a sensory nerve coming from the middle ear, the vestibular cochlear. So we move from nerve eight, nerve nine is the glossopharyngeal. The glossopharyngeal, remember, glosso is a reference to tongue, pharyngeal is a reference to pharynx, so it innervates your throat and tongue. Uh, nerve 10 is the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve is a nerve that is one of the few spinal nerves that, that goes beyond the head and neck, and it goes into your abdomen and your thorax where it innervates the lungs, the heart, and your abdominal organs. Nerve 11 is the spinal accessory nerve, which gets its name because it runs down the side of the spinal cord, and we would find it in the transverse foramen that we learned in cervical vertebrae, and it's gonna innervate some muscles of your neck like the trapezius that we learned, the sternocleidomastoid that we learned, and then as we move from nerve 11, post anterior again, to this nerve, which is nerve 12, that's the hypoglossal nerve. So that nerve went, passes through a canal we learned in the skull, the hypoglossal canal, and it innervates the, the muscles of the tongue that we learned, the, the hyoglossus, genioglossus, and styloglossus muscles. Now as we continue downward, what confuses students sometimes 
is that these nerves arising here are actually arising off the spinal cord. So these are actually spinal nerves and not cranial nerves. And this would be C1 and C2, cervical 1 and cervical 2.